I wonder how many people here have ever heard of the Project for a New American Century. This uh, was a, a neocon uh, think tank operation that uh, sat down in the late 90s and tried to envision the shape of an American empire in the 21st century. And it has been remarked upon by many people with some interest that the PNAC report uh, issued, I believe, in 1998 famously said that the American people were likely unwilling to support empire. They were likely unwilling to make the sacrifices that the leaders of the uh, uh, statist faction reflected, uh, wh whose views were reflected in this report, thought were crucial. They were unlikely to make those sacrifices uh, under ordinary circumstances. What was necessary, said the uh, authors of the PNAC report, was a new Pearl Harbor. This is their phrase, a new Pearl Harbor. If there were a new Pearl Harbor, then people might be galvanized to support global war and therefore global empire. It is obvious that the political class in the United States has dramatically strengthened the power of the state in the wake of what can reasonably be described as a new Pearl Harbor on September 11, 2001. War is the health of the state. The state has grown uh, dramatically uh, in power and uh, in control over people's lives. So abolishing the state is key to abolishing war. And uh, the Tannehills suggest that the example of a free society can help to abolish the state around the world. So if you see a state in operation, it can seem fairly natural and normal and obvious. But then when you see an alternative, when you see a function stateless society, what that can do is withdraw legitimacy from other states. Let me offer an example from U.S. history that doesn't quite have to do with this. Koinonia Farms, uh, founded in the uh, Red Hills of Georgia in the 1940s by a man named Clarence Jordan. Clarence Jordan was a crusading uh, Baptist preacher who is perhaps best known today as the uh, translator uh, he was uh, an expert in uh, biblical languages who had a PhD in New Testament Greek uh, as the translator of what's called the Cotton Patch Bible, which renders the uh, Bible in the English of uh, rural people in the South in the middle of the 20th century. Clarence Jordan founded Koinonia Farms, and Koinonia Farms had this primary feature to note. At Koinonia Farms, black folks and white folks worked together. Now, that might seem like a pretty unremarkable thing, except that this was the Red Hills of Georgia in the 1940s. And what's noteworthy is the level of hostility that Jordan's operation uh, provoked on the part of people in the area. No one else in the area was being required to uh, rub shoulders with uh, folks uh, with skin color different from theirs. And nonetheless, there were threats and violence and ostracism and so forth because it was threatening just to see this possibility put on display. Just seeing the possibility out there and put on display shows what? It shows that the biggest lie of those in authority is a lie. And what is that biggest lie of those in authority? It's TINA, T-I-N-A, there is no alternative. When we say there is no alternative, this cuts the nerve of social criticism. If people assume, well, no matter how awful this is, there's nothing else I can do. If that's what you assume, then you go back to work, you shut up, you accept the way things are. However, once you see an alternative put on display, then that's revolutionary because at that point you recognize that it's not the case, that we have to keep living this way. We can do something else. And so I think the Tannehills are right that the example of a free society can play a vital role in abolishing the state. Now that's not the only way in which the existence of a free society would serve to undermine the authority of states. It's also the case that such a society could attract immigrants 
from societies misruled by states. People would head there uh, choosing to live in, better, in a better place uh, rather than in their uh, state uh, uh, controlled environments. Uh, in addition, uh, there would surely be investment from statist societies. Instead of investing in uh, those uh, statist environments, uh, money would flow into st uh, state free environments. Further, a disciplined money supply in a stateless society would tend to, to, to discipline globally the money manipulation carried on by states uh, to the extent that currency exchange took place. Uh, obviously, this would serve as a market corrective on the inflationary policies of other states if it were possible to uh, convert currency into the currency of, uh, or currencies of a stateless society. Uh, the very existence of a stateless society would serve to reduce the power of states and thus the likelihood of war. A stateless society would be a great place to live, but it would also be indirectly a trigger for the conversion of other societies across the globe into great places to live.